Now an update on the status of immigrant parents and children separated at the U.S. border in recent months. Yesterday, the Trump administration and the American Civil Liberties Union submitted widely divergent plans to the court on how to reunite hundreds of parents, many of them already deported from the United States, with their children who remain in the care and custody of U.S. immigration officials. Here today, Amna Nawaz has been monitoring a federal court hearing out in California, and she continues her reporting on the separated families. Hello, Amna, and I want to ask you about that. But first, just yes. within the last hour or so, there's been a ruling on, on, on another immigration matter by a different federal judge. So bring us up to speed on That's that. That's right. This is about DACA. Uh, this is just moments ago a district judge in D.C. ruled that the Trump administration's decision to end DACA was unlawful, and he ordered that it be restored soon. Now, DACA, of course, is Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. It was put into place by President Obama to shield hundreds of thousands of young people from deportation. Uh, and, and basically, President Trump has always said it's illegal. He ended it back in September. The judge today called that decision arbitrary and capricious. He's giving them 20 days to put it back into place and also gives them time to reply and to appeal if they choose. So we'll see. We'll we see will what see. They do. So let's go back to the reason we called you here <laughs> tonight. You've been following this story for, for days and weeks. Weeks even. Um, Amna, this, was, this is two different filings, as we said, one from the government, one from the ACLU. The judge has been hearing it. Where do we stand right now? So overall, when it comes to the separated families, we have to remember there are still several hundred children who are waiting to be reunited with their families and are still in U.S. government care and custody. The government's been making steady progress, right? They started with about 2,700 children. They have moved over 2,000 out of their care and custody. But this next group that the judge is focused on, this is going to be tougher. These are parents who were either released into the U.S. or parents who were deported or voluntarily left. So we're talking about about 500 parents for whom the government doesn't necessarily know where they are and doesn't necessarily have a way to contact them. That is going to complicate getting them back with their children significantly. So they've submitted these plans. How are they going to pull this off? What What is going on at this point? Well, at this point in the hearing today, the judge was addressing the plans that they had submitted. The government, sort of surprisingly to a lot of people, really tried to push a lot of the responsibility to the ACLU. Said, go find the parents, ask them if they want their kids back, and then let us know we'll reunify them. The judge today basically said, I don't think so. He said, look, this is 100 percent the government's responsibility. We're here because of your separation policy, you have to own this moving forward. He called their plan unacceptable, and he reminded them, look, for every parent you fail to find, you're going to have a permanently orphaned child. So I asked an expert about this earlier today, how they move forward. I, a short time ago, I spoke with Michelle Brane. She's the director of the Migrant Rights and Justice Program at the Women's Refugee Commission. She's an attorney who's long worked on immigrant and human rights issues, and she's been working with the ACLU on these reunification efforts. And I asked her about the government taking the lead moving forward. You know, throughout this process, we've seen the government failing to take responsibility over and over and over again. So it's not surprising. Um, I'm glad the judge made that very clear. And I hope that they step up. But throughout this process, it's been um, required step by step that the judge tell them what needs to be done and by what date. So these two groups we're talking about now is the focus for unification. Parents who have left either voluntarily or because they were deported, they're released into the U.S. How much contact information, location information, how much does the government actually have about these parents? Well, that is really the question, and that is what we're asking the government to tell us. We think that, at least in some of these cases, they have some information. Um, we are aware that in some cases children have been speaking to their parents even after their parents were removed. And so that would indicate that there's a way to communicate with those parents. Um, but we have to wait and see. I don't know if that's, you know, 20 out of the almost 500 or if that's closer to 400 out of the 500. And tell me about that lack of information, though. How much more complicated is the process moving forward because of the status of these parents? Well, you know, these parents fled their country in the first place because they were um, being persecuted, they were fleeing violence, they were looking to save their children's lives. So it's not going to be easy to find them um, back in their home countries. And that's for several reasons. We don't know where they are. We don't know if they went back to the same place they fled or the last place we know of. Um, we don't know if they're in hiding. We don't know if they're en route to come back to try to find their children again. And when we go in there, you know, there's there's attorneys and, and nonprofits and just citizens who want to help, who are ready to go help find these parents. But these are dangerous places. And so 
we can't have people just running in in large groups looking for people who may be in hiding. I mean, this really has to be done with care. And that's why I think it's really important that the government take some responsibility and step up and help. You raise the interesting point, of course, that a lot of parents fled dangerous conditions in the first place mm -hmm. with their kids before they were separated. One of the questions the government wants answered is, do you even want your child reunited with you? Can you give me a sense of how many parents have already decided or may decide, you know what, I may have had to have le to, le to leave, but I, I don't want my child brought back to me because I know they're safer in the U.S. Right. That may be the case for some of these parents, and it's really important that we actually give the parents the opportunity to to express that view, that desire, in a context in which they can do that um, safely and reasonably. Many of these parents were forced to make decisions about whether to leave or not leave um, while being detained, while not knowing what was happening to their children, and very often not even knowing what they were agreeing to. And what was often presented to them was, if you want your child back, you need to sign this paper in order to do that the quickest way possible. And any parent in that circumstance is going to feel pressure or, or the desire to see their child above all else. So a lot of people signed those documents. What was not presented to the, many of these families was the option of staying and fighting the case themselves. These parents, in many, many cases, also have asylum claims. And I believe that many of them withdrew their claims thinking it was the only way to be reunified with their child. And in those cases, I think that they should be able to come back to the United States and pursue that application. How confident are you that these hundreds of parents, whom the government is still trying to find in the first place, will be or could be reunited with their children again? You know, I think that there's no question that we risk having some parents we never find. Um, and that some will say, as you indicated, I prefer my child to have a chance at safety in the United States, even if I can't be with them. Um, but I don't think we're ready at this point to sort of throw up our hands and say, well, many of these just won't be found, and that's the way it is. As the judge indicated, the government has a responsibility to try to find these parents, and hopefully um, we will find most, if not all of them. Michelle Brown, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Such an important perspective for us to hear. And Amna, I can't let you go without asking you about little Sophie, the, the young girl who you met at the border what weeks ago with her grandmother, That's right. separated from her family. Where does that stand? So today, Judy marks six weeks since three-year-old Sophie was separated her family. She remains in U.S. government custody today. Here is some information we can share, though, that we haven't been able to share before. Sophie's family, um, including her mother, who is working to get her back, they're all in California. Sophie remains in a U.S. A federally contracted shelter in Pennsylvania. Now, in the coming days, Sophie's mother, with the support of a volunteer group called Immigrant Families Working Together, she's actually planning to go to Pennsylvania to try to apply some pressure and to get her daughter back. You know, we talk to her mother quite regularly, and she tells us every time she used to talk to Sophie, Sophie would cry, and she would beg to come get picked up, and she would ask when her mother was going to come. When we spoke to her yesterday, she said Sophie doesn't do that anymore. And she's worried Sophie has grown numb, or that she's given up, or that she's grown accustomed to life in the shelter and life without her family. So she's continuing to work through the government reunification process. She's submitting her documents. She's following the rules as they're laid out. But she says she wants to see Sophie. So she's going to Pennsylvania. And she says when she leaves, she hopes that it will be with her daughter. It's just a three-year-old girl away from her mother, her family, for, for six weeks. That's right. It's just hard to comprehend. Amna, thank you. Thanks, Judy.